The New Orleans Saints defense looked really good against the Los Angeles Chargers offense in their first day of joint practices, but the one thing they couldn't stop was Keenan Allen. Can they stop him in day two? We got all that and a little bit of land yet for you on today's episode of Locked on Saints. You are Locked on Saints, your daily New Orleans Saints podcast, part of the Locked on Podcast Network, your team every day. What is good, Houdat Nation and Houdat family? Welcome in to another episode of Locked on Saints, your daily podcast covering your favorite team, the New Orleans Saints, part of Locked on Podcast Network, your team every day. Thanks so much as always. So all you everydayers out there, make a Locked on Saints your first listen of the day every day. Don't forget, you can always subscribe and follow for free on YouTube or wherever you get your podcasts so you never miss the latest episodes. And if you want to keep the conversation going one-on-one with me, Take part in our exclusive film studies, Q&As, inside information, early access, and much more. You can head over to joinsubtext.com slash locked on saints today to join a community that I would love for you to be a part of. As always, I'm your host, Ross Jackson, at Ross Jackson Nola on Twitter, your New Orleans Saints expert credential member of the media. You can find me as the senior writer and reporter over at Saints News Network, Sports Illustrated's Fan Nation site covering the New Orleans Saints every Tuesday on the Locked on NFL podcast and here with you every single Monday through Friday on Locked on Saints. Today's episode of Locked on Saints brought to you by LinkedIn Jobs. LinkedIn Jobs helps you find the candidates you want to talk to faster. Post your job for free at linkedin.com slash locked on NFL. That's linkedin.com slash locked on NFL to post your job for free. Terms and conditions apply. On today's episode of Locked on Saints, I'm going to tell you why I think day two of joint practices with the Chargers will be different from day one with one very, very, very key element. We're also going to take a look at consistency over on the offense. That's the next leap for New Orleans going from day one to day two. We'll explain how the Saints can get there. But first, can the New Orleans Saints finally find a way to stop Keenan Allen and Justin Herbert? Look, the Saints defense played remarkably well, remarkably well during the first day of joint practices. However, they did not perform extremely well at stopping the connection between Justin Herbert as well as Keenan Allen. Keenan Allen caught 11 of his 14 passes that he was targeted in, in just team drills. And then if you look over at um, Justin Herbert, he rested right around 21 of 28. So the majority of his passes were completed to Keenan Allen. Now, a lot of them were in the underneath area. There were a couple of exceptions. There was a big one in seven on sevens. There was another big one in an earlier team drill, but for the most part, it was a lot of underneath. The words that I wrote a ton while watching the Saints defense match up with that Chargers offense were underneath, quick out, quick slant, quick crosser, like those types of things, or crosser underneath, those types of deals, screens, flats, swings, all that stuff. That's what we saw a lot of from this Chargers offense. Now, that's probably just something that they were working on more than it is anything else. But I also think that, like, look, even when you're working on those moments, If you get an opportunity downfield, you take the opportunity downfield, but the Saints didn't let up very much when it came to those opportunities downfield. So what will they do to stop Keenan Allen and Justin Herbert from having that connection without sacrificing your coverage down on the back end and deep downfield? Tyron Matthew kind of spoke about it today and said that that's a big thing that that they're going to be looking at. But I really appreciated and liked what Cam Jordan had to say as well. Not but and. I really enjoyed what Cam Jordan had to say about it as well, which is that it taught the, so the Chargers kind of doing those quick passes and focusing on those quick passes in the short intermediate areas, really short areas more than intermediate, taught the Saints defense some patience is the way that Cam Jordan explained it. And I think that that's valuable because what we saw when they learned a little bit of patience uh, was that they turned that into pressures. They turned that into getting their hands up when they couldn't at the line of scrimmage, when they couldn't get through and couldn't get that pressure. Batting passes down. We also saw it result in a couple of turnovers. Look, the the turnover that took place with the uh, the Saints defense when uh, DeMarco Jackson got the interception over on the left sideline. The reason why that interception happened was because they played through. Everybody continued to go through their reps. And actually, DeMarco, who could have given up on the play when he saw Isaiah Fossey get into the backfield, continued to cover his man over on that left sideline. And it wasn't just him. Marshall Lattimore was over there. Several Saints were over there. And so when Easton Stick made the mistake, and we talked about this last week, we talked about this last week, 
It's not just about being in position. It's not just about skill. It's also about simply taking advantage when the offense does something, we'll call it ill-advised. And that's exactly what this pass was. And so what does DeMarco Jackson do? He gets up, he jumps, he fights for the ball, and then brings it down for the interception. Huge takeaway for that New Orleans Saints defense. The other one was the, uh, the run play with Josh Kelly over, or excuse me, Austin Eckler over to the left sideline, where it was either Nephi Sewell or Marshawn Lattimore, one of the two, punched the ball out, and it was a scoop and score by Marshawn Lattimore, but it was patience that got them there. They played their run fits. They held their responsibilities. The, you know, Marshawn Lattimore, fantastic perimeter run defender, got all that done. The, one of the pass breakups that we saw from Marshawn Lattimore was him staying put, staying home where he needed to be. Keenan Allen pushed up the field, and instead of Marshawn getting impatient and biting on the downfield push, which we saw a lot, not necessarily from, um, not necessarily from Marshawn Lattimore, but from other defenders, especially during one on ones, we saw them get, you know, pushed or or not pushed, but we saw them bite on these, you know, fakes or these double moves and things like that, which ended up cooking some of the Saints defenders. Um, particularly early in the one-on-ones, which I'll tell you a little bit, a little something about one-on-ones that was really funny today, or that was interesting from today. Um, instead of him biting on that vertical release, he knew, okay, they like to go short. They've been working in this underneath area. I'm going to stay home. And what did he do? He stayed home. He remained patient, didn't bite on the deep fake. And then once the deep fake, that's so funny to say nowadays. Uh, but then once Keenan Allen made his angle back and started the, the comeback over on the left sideline, Marshawn Lattimore diving, knocking the ball away. It taught them that patience to just keep pushing, keep pushing, keep pushing, but also sit, listen to what the offense is giving you, listen to what the offense is telling you and work through that. And that's what we saw a lot of from this New Orleans Saints defense. So the patience actually ended up getting them somewhere quite a bit. So I thought that the Saints learned a good lesson and implemented that lesson quickly into what they were doing. We saw that patience also pay off as things turned its tide uh, during the Saints defense matching up with the Los Angeles Chargers offense in one-on-ones between receivers and tight ends and safeties and, uh, well, let's just call them defensive backs, right? Safeties and, and, and corners. Um, the Chargers ran 30, 3-0, uh, different um, one-on-one opportunities. They won 14 of those. And in winning 14 of those, the Saints won only nine. And then there were a bunch of stalemates that were kind of in between. But the thing about it is that when you look at the list, the Saints won only one rep in the first 16 opportunities, only one. But then in the last 14 opportunities, they won eight of those, more than half over on the defensive side. And I don't mean one as in you know, the ball was thrown out of bounds or it was, you know, overthrown or was out of reach. I counted those as stalemates. I'm talking pass breakups. I'm talking, you know, being in coverage and not allowing the quarterback to be able to even have an avenue to throw the ball and therefore throwing the ball at the ground or not even throwing the ball or whatever it might be. And so I think you see that patience there too. And that's an interesting little note I wanted to give you about the one-on-ones anyway, so that works out perfect. Uh, so I do think that the Saints can find a way to limit Keenan Allen by remaining patient. And I think that patience will benefit them on the back end too of not then reacting so uh, aggressively to the underneath stuff that they give up the stuff over the top. We'll see if they're able to maintain that. The Saints offense going to be looking for some consistency as well. They had a nice day, but not a great day. What can get them from nice to great? We'll break that down. As we continue on with today's episode of Locked on Saints, put a Locked on Podcast Network, your team every day. Today's episode of Locked on Saints brought to you by LinkedIn Jobs. LinkedIn Jobs helps you find the qualified candidates you want to talk to faster. And especially nowadays when you're looking at every potential hire being like a high stakes wager for a small business, you want to make sure that you're 100% certain that you have access to the best qualified candidates that are available. That's where LinkedIn Jobs comes in. They're going to give you access to tools like screening questions, simple tools that make it easy for you to focus on the candidates that have the right skills and have the right experience so that you can quickly prioritize who you want to interview and hire. Think about all the times you've gone to LinkedIn Jobs looking for a job or gone to LinkedIn looking for a job. Well, LinkedIn Jobs is going to help you be able to flip that around. And if you're a hiring manager, bring in your own team. It's one of the reasons why small businesses, because of things like screening questions and hashtag hiring frames to help spread the word, 
have all voted LinkedIn Jobs number one in delivering quality hires versus some of the leading candidates out there. LinkedIn Jobs helps you find the qualified candidates you want to talk to faster. So post your job for free at linkedin.com slash locked on NFL. That's linkedin.com slash locked on NFL to post your job for free. Terms and conditions apply. All right, family, continue on with today's episode of Locked on Saints, getting you ready for day two of New Orleans Saints and Los Angeles Chargers joint practices. If you want my instant reaction, uh, you can go over to the live show, which is the show right before this one or whatever platform you're using. That gives you all of my thoughts from the first day of joint practices, including the big plays, the takeaways, some play breakdowns, and much, much more. So today we're focusing on looking at the context of day one and looking ahead to the context of day two. How can things be a little bit different? That's why we focused on the Saints defense limiting Keenan Allen because he was all over the place, uh, particularly in the short area of the field in day one. But now let's look over at the offensive side of the football and what would be the next leap for them, which is all about consistency. Thanks so much as always. So all your everyday is out there making Locked on Saints your first listen of the day every day. So when I talk about consistency, I think the big thing that I mean is can the New Orleans Saints find consistent success play in and play out sort of like what they did during the preseason game. And the preseason game, I know that there was an incomplete pass that started off that drive, all that. I, I get it. I get that there's always going to be some level of inconsistency, but a greater amount of, cons- of consistency ain't never hurt nobody. You know what I'm saying? And, and so that's really the big thing that you're going to be looking for next. And where we didn't see that consistency the most during day one of Saints and Chargers joint practices was from the offensive line. The starting offensive line looked good. I I mentioned yesterday uh, 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 Trevor Penning looked good against both of the options that he's going to have to deal with over the course of these joint practices. But what we did also see was a a second string defensive or offensive line that didn't hold up as reliably as you'd like to see. And now that you've got Andrus Pete back-ish, right, back present in, um, in pads, participated in some drills, but not all drills, all that. That kind of helps bolster what your second unit is, because either your second unit is going to feature at left guard now, Andrus Pete or James Hurst. In either case, your second unit is all of a sudden better, right? Much better, in fact. Uh, And then you have a guy like Nick Saldaveri that you can move over to right guard, who has shown a little bit of development over the course of the past couple of weeks, I'll say. So I think that that helps you with consistency. And then once you have that, right, like once you have the consistency of the protection, then all of a sudden, you start doling out the passes. You get a little bit more comfortable, right? Think back to the touchdown that, the, that Derek Carr threw to Keith Kirkwood in the preseason game in the first drive against the Kansas City Chiefs. What did he have? A boatload of time. They were just kind of sit back, let it all develop. He had a sip of a little pina colada, and then he threw the pass and he scored the touchdown, right? Like it was real simple, not simple, but it was real calm, all of it. And I think you want to see that here. And, and look, Part of that calmness is all about the quarterback, right? So you could have Jameis Winston under pressure, but if he can remain calm, then he'll deliver a pass. You could have Derek Carr under pressure, but if he remains calm, he'll deliver a pass. If you get Jay Kaner back there and he's calm, he can still deliver a pass even when he's under pressure. But any of those players, if they are under pressure or even are not under pressure, but are anticipating pressure and then therefore get rushed, it could be an interception. It could be something else. It could be a fumble. It could be a throwaway, whatever it might be. So I think what you're looking for is just more consistency from the offensive line, which allows the offense to be calm, you know, the quarterback to be calm. You know what it is that makes you anticipate pressure? Previous pressure. That's the thing that does it, right? You start to lose trust in your offensive line or you start to think, oh, okay, pressure came from that last time. So I got to do this a little bit differently or, or whatever it might be. And so those are the things that you want to see the New Orleans Saints offense avoid. The other piece of it is just keep feeding the beasts, plural beasts. Man, like just keep feeding. Uh, Juwan Johnson, Foster Moreau, Alvin Kamara, Jamal Williams. Now you got Daryl Williams out there catching passes too. Ellis Merriweather's out here catching passes one handed, you know, just sticking them out, snag, all that kind of stuff. Chris Olave has been outstanding. Michael Thomas has been really good. Uh, Kwan Baker had the practice of his his career on, on Thursday. John Trey Kirkland's making a name for himself. I mean, your A.T. Perry's making a name for himself. Shaq Davis is getting comfortable. So just keep feeding these players and putting them in the opportunity to, or putting them in the situation 
to go out there and, and build their confidence, right? This is the opportunity to throw passes that you wouldn't throw in a game. So if you got Shaq Davis and he's outside and you know on the outside running down the field and he's got a smaller DB on him, just put it up for him. Just put it up for him. See what happens. Everything. Let him go make that play. You might not throw that pass in a game, but you can throw it here in training camp. You can throw it here in Orange County. You're probably not going to throw it in Los Angeles on Sunday when they actually move up for the game, uh, which by the way, the Saints... Like we all just brought a hurricane with us, Hurricane Hillary coming through over in California. Like what is happening? Uh, but I, I think that that's the other piece of it is just continuing to build confidence for the young players, continuing to build confidence for the players that are in new situations like a Foster Moreau, right? Who's new to the team, um, like a John Trey Kirkland, who's new to the team, but also young, um, you know, building confidence for a guy like Michael Thomas, who's coming off of an injury or several injuries over the course of the past three seasons, all that stuff. So. Keep giving them the opportunity to be able to build their confidence, which reflects positively on Derek Carr as a passer, having confidence in those players. And I think that goes a long way too. The last piece of it all, and this is so tough to gauge. And we saw a little bit in the preseason game, we saw the really phenomenal run blocking and that kind of knife run by Alvin Kamara on the right side that was led by uh, Adam Prentice, but everybody had a hat on a hat. It was just outstanding blocking all the way across. We saw that um, last week, and we got to see that in in a game situation. It's a little bit tougher, right? Watching the, the run plays during practice when no one's trying to hit each other and stuff like that, which, by the way, did not stop Alante Taylor on Thursday. He wanted to make sure that somebody knew he was making a stop short on a third and short and forcing a fourth down, and rightfully so. Uh, and he just knock somebody over. Be like, no, this is not a first down. <laughs> and he wanted everybody to know it. And I love that attitude. Um, but I think that the next piece too is being able to, to, to maybe have some of those wide open runs, some of those opportunities that you watch and you go, oh yeah, okay, that would be a breakaway. Or, oh yeah, okay, that would be a touchdown, right? In the red zone, in the goal line areas, stuff like that. And so finding more of those opportunities are big. I think the Saints offense is at its best during practice when it's going through situational stuff, two minute drill, red zone, goal line, those types of things. So those are really going to be the big things that I'm watching. Can they operate more consistently or remain consistently operational in those situational drives? That's the other piece that I'm going to be looking at as well. So consistency is the next leap for the New Orleans Saints. And once they can do that, they're in good shape to get started for the 2023 season. Coming up next, why will day two be different between the Saints and the Chargers? There's one answer, but I got a lot of information for you about why. We got that coming up for you as we continue on and wrap up today's episode of Locked on Saints, part of Locked on Podcast Network, your team every day. Get it, Huda Nation, wrapping up today's episode of Locked on Saints, our Friday morning episode. Remember, we'll be live with you later on today, 6.30 Central Time Channel for myself, Doug Mouton, Ricardo LeCompte, and more, bringing you live coverage here from Costa Mesa on the news. So we'll be doing that over at WWL with our sports special at 6.30 Eastern Time. Once I'm done with that, I'll come back to the hotel, we'll jump on live, and then we'll discuss more. So I'll probably be live again around when I was live on Thursday, probably around like 8 p.m. or so. Uh, but first episode today, getting you ready for day two. So here's the thing that I'll mention about day two of practice and why it's going to be different than day one. The big, big, big element and why everything changes going into the second day of joint practices, and we saw the same thing during the Packers joint practices as well, by the way, is film. Everything changes. On Friday, everything changes today when it comes to these joint practices because what neither of these teams had going into the, the the first practice was film to watch. Yeah, they could go and grab film from the first preseason game and all that, but what are you getting against the first team there? A drive, maybe. You're not getting a lot, and then you're not going to use last year's film because this is an entirely different team. There's big changes, might be new approaches, all those other things. So Saints didn't even really watch film to get ready for this. Uh, and the Chargers didn't really watch film to get ready for this. Obviously, there are probably some exceptions, but like Derek Carr was like, yeah, we didn't really do Because what are you going to watch? What are you going to watch? Now, 
they get to spend this entire evening <laughs> combing through, or, or this entire evening as I'm recording this, Thursday night, combing through all of the stuff from Thursday in order to be a little bit more ready uh, on Friday. And that's going to change a lot. I mean, all the things that we've been talking about so far are going to be impacted by having film study and by having film sessions and having access to that information. Um, how do you stop Keenan Allen by being patient on those underneath routes, but also not allowing yourself to get so overly aggressive on those underneath routes that you start giving up the deeper routes? Film study becomes a big part of that. How do you as Marshawn Lattimore, all told, just kind of get an understanding of, okay, this is what Keenan's trying to do. And when he does this, he does this. When he has this type of release, he likes to do this. When they're in this situation and those situational drills that I was just highlighting, what do they do? Individually, you can start to break down your matchup, but also as a whole, as a defense and as a unit, you can start to look at the opposing offense and say, okay, here are the things that they do that are trends. Here are the things that they do that are tells. Here are the things that we can look at. Tyron Matthew spoke about this quite a bit because Derek Carr was kind of saying that, you know, after practicing against this defense for so long, that the defense has been out there kind of stealing calls from the Saints offense to the Saints offense. They'll call their play in the huddle. They'll walk up. The Saints defense will look at the formation and they'll be like, oh, it's this. And then they'll start <laughs> giving the play to each other over the defensive side. Now you start to get a little bit more of that back in your pocket, right? And with a defense that's as smart as the New Orleans Saints defense, led by guys like Cam Jordan and Tyron Matthew, and then DeMario Davis, if he were on the field, but even still Pete Werner, uh, you know, you know how smart Marshawn Lattimore is. Like these guys have seen so much, maybe with the exception of Pete Werner, but then maybe you add in Jalen Smith in that equation, who has seen a lot over the course of his career. And Pete Werner, just being a smart player, knows how to work with that, all those things. So then you start to kind of see them do a little bit of like, oh, hey, I think they're going to do this or watch for this concept that this person has a spray release. They might be running an out. And if they do that, then that out means that this one is probably like a dagger concept. And so they're running deep. Like, Though that's the type of stuff that you might see, but probably way less elementary than what I just uh, I just tried to give as an example there. But uh, I do think that those are the things that will end up massively impacting the Saints defense in their quest for the first thing that we talked about on today's show, which is locking up Keenan Allen a little bit, but not giving up kind of the big plays over on that side. Similarly, for the New Orleans Saints on the offensive side, they get to go back and maybe look at the opportunities that they did miss, right? And then they start to look at how they build consistency off of that. And so when we were kind of like looking through like, okay, Michael Thomas made this play, this play, but then wasn't able to make this play. Boom. You look back and you look back at the first two plays. Why did it work? And how do I consistently do that if I'm Michael Thomas in that scenario? And then the play that doesn't work, I treat with equally the same amount of respect and the same amount of weight. And I say, okay, that didn't work. How do I make it work? And then I start to work towards that. So again, individually, you can do little things like that. Michael Thomas, Chris Olave, Heck, Kawan Baker, who just had a great day. Uh, Derek Carr gets to do that as well. The interception that he threw, I think, was picked off by Derwin James, if I remember correctly. Um, what happened? What do you do better next time? The offensive line. What are the moves that this defensive line is showing you? What are the tells that you can tell based on their alignment or their stance or whatever it might be, right? Like maybe in the maybe in the first day of practice, you're learning like, hey, this defensive lineman's jump off is ridiculous. And I did not expect that. Now I'm ready for that in day two. So film, film changes everything in the game of football most of the time, right? Like, haven't you heard, like, we've all heard that before, right? Those times where you have a, a rookie quarterback that comes in and Brock Purdy's like crazy. And then what does everybody say? Oh, well, next time they're going to have film on them and that's going to make it better. You know what I mean? Or, or whatever it is. You know, Tate said the same thing about Teddy Bridgewater. Teddy Bridgewater came in and in, in relief of Drew Brees years ago. And, uh, over the course of the first three games, goes three and zero, oh, and then everybody went. Well, now there's three games of film, so the New Orleans Saints, they're they're you know up a creek, right? And then what happens? You get two more games. So does it always work? No, but does it have an impact? Yeah, of course, of course it does, because that's what the game of football is. The game of football is all about um, you know winning these like little battles, these little wars, these little matchups, and all these other things. And film helps you get prepared to do that. Uh, so I'm really looking forward to the second day of Saints practice versus the Chargers. Um, it's been great to be able to come to these joint practices. I wouldn't get to do this if it wasn't for you. So thank you. Um, 
for making this a, a viable option to where I get to travel and do these types of things. Um, and I'm glad that it brings some value uh, for you as well. So uh, I'm really excited to see how the Saints defense improves going into day two, even though day one was strong, and then how the Saints offense improves, even though day one was like good. Yeah, it was nice. It was a, it was a good performance by, by the Saints offense, although not consistent. And so you just want to see the consistency there. All right. Well, later on today, we'll be live. Don't forget, 630 Channel 4, WWL, will be live with Doug Mouton here in Orange County. And then I'll come right back to the hotel, or I'll see if they'll just let me just do it out there. I might be able to just kind of do it out there. They've got Wi-Fi and everything set up for us. I don't know how good it is for a live stream, but we can try. Uh, and then if it doesn't work, I'll just come back to the hotel and we can do it at the hotel. We'll see. Um, but we'll give it a shot. And then you'll have your live episode that gets you all the information that you need to know from everything that went on in uh, day two. And don't forget, you'll have your written stuff up as well. Saints.media over at Saints News Network tomorrow. I'm focusing offense. John Hendricks is focusing defense. But of course, when I come to the show here, you'll have, you'll, I'll, I'll be able to give you everything. So whole bunch, whole bunch on the way. Appreciate y'all. As always, make it locked on Saints, your first listen of the day, every day, 6.30 tonight, WWL TV. Soon after that, we'll be live over at Locked on Saints to give you everything you need to know. And then of course, postcast after the game on Sunday. Then I got some short form content coming on the way. Just so you know, throughout the season, we're keeping two days. Like two days just aren't going anywhere. But I'm, I'm going to find a creative way to make a version of two days happen all season long. So watch out for that. Uh, we're going to call it the hurry up and the extra point, And we're going to put that all together to give you another show. So I appreciate y'all. We got so much on the way. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And thank you for making Locked Out Saints part of your day, part of your routine for saying yes to me on the show. As always, if you see me, say hi. If you need anything else around your New Orleans Saints in between these episodes, make sure you follow me on your favorite social media at Ross Jackson, N-O-L-A. Hit me up. Let me know how the family's doing. Let me know how you're living. Let me know how your mom and them. And trust you, that nation, I'll holla at you.